Some of the OA crew who have frequented the national planning meetings over the years remember Dell's story about a kid in the rain who needed a ride at the 1998 NOAC. That story was true, and it was the first time I ever met Dell Loader, but much of this intended audience already heard the rather unabridged version the first time around, so I will dispense with that one. Of the many memories that I have of Dell, one makes me grin to this day, and all have a resounding theme. He always took the time to go out of his way for the youth of the Order of the Arrow. He always remembered us, he knew the details of our time as officers, and he continued to make time long after we were out of the BSA limelight. Dell had a level of authenticity and genuine care that was truly unmatched. I would like to share a tale of the 2009 NOAC with you, which was a high intensity one for me. I ended up filling some big shoes that year that spanned a variety of roles, and I had a lot to prove in those days. One role which I probably should have relinquished, but did not because I enjoyed it so much, was conducting rehearsals for the youth officers, actors, and other performers ahead of their on-stage performances at the evening shows. As a trained actor, Dell had had many experiences with OA shows, so everyone knew him and he knew his way around the stage. For me, it was an excuse to work with my friend on rehearsing his speech for the acceptance of the Lifetime Achievement Award that year. I thought it would be fun for us to spend some time and work in an environment we both genuinely enjoyed. We were only a couple of days out from the awards and recognition show at which Dell would take the big stage. As I recall, he didn't really want to spend much time rehearsing. Consider it as he was, Dell didn't want to take any time from the youth or others who needed to practice more than he did on stage. We may have had one quick sound check and a brief rehearsal. Pressure turned to me a bit to make sure that Dell had a message that aligned with the conference theme, the power of one, I'm sure you all remember it. It was the first time we truly integrated a theme throughout the fiber of the entire conference. So having Dell reinforce it was critical. His speech was to be a major highlight for the week. Dell was turning 81 that year, so he was certainly not in his prime. And I always knew him, even as he aged, to be fully capable of anything he was asked to do. He was not the sort of man to be micromanaged, yet Dell was being a bit secretive, shall we say, about his plans for the speech. You must, you must remember that these shows are filled with creativity, but given the organization, the messages need to be approved and we reinforce the importance of sticking to the script. Don't worry, I told the wizards behind the curtain, he's got it. At some point, someone key to the show's infrastructure caught a glimpse of Dell's notes for the speech, which appeared to be various mathematical formulas written indiscriminately in various orientations on the page. Concern grew and the prevailing sentiment was that we had to strike a balance between letting Dell exercise creative privilege and license and inserting some protective measures to preserve his dignity if something were to go awry. Without getting into the detail, several contingencies were implemented in case something went afoul. Brad Haddock, the national chairman, introduced Dell during the presentation and did something that we planned, but which was very unorthodox. He set up a seat downstage left, just a few feet from the lectern, rather than exit backstage following the introduction. It was a simple hedge in case something unexpected occurred. I vividly remember the moment. I was on a headset directly in front of the stage at House Wright, and I nervously crossed my fingers as Brad's introduction concluded and Dell took center stage. Brad let Dell know that he would be nearby, which incidentally was caught on mic. I had an abundance of confidence in the man. I had watched him perform over the years without a blip, but images of the formulas on the page that he had written kept me on edge since I really did not, even at that point, have a clear picture of the message that he had planned to deliver. This was obfuscated by Dell's fervor for the element of surprise, which would shock no one that knew him well. I braced, I braced, and I watched, and then something happened. 
as if a straggling spotlight found its actor or a dead mic suddenly switched on. Dell reacted to Brad's comment of reassurance and support. Brad, why don't you go take a seat? Just seven words into the speech, I knew it was on. And Dell proceeded flawlessly, mind you, to deliver an eloquent, cohesive, and theme-infused message. One that logically flowed from those mysterious formulas written on the page. And I must say, the man brought down the house that night. In that moment, Dell became our closest tie to the late founder, Dr. Ian Goodman. And he renewed his status of hero for those of us who knew him personally. My reaction that night came in various forms. I think I first sighed a bit of relief. Then I chided myself for ever doubting the man, but mostly I grinned. I think I may have even cried just a little out of joy. Knowing that Del Loader was the hero that we needed that night and probably the same hero that we need today. Keep coming, keep coming, go ahead. Ready? I'll be here with you if you need something. Oh, sit down.